Hello, Imperialis here, and welcome to Star Sector, or rather, welcome to my desktop, I guess. Um, so yes, but this will be Star Sector in a moment. Uh, this is the episode zero for the Let's Play that I'm going to be starting. Um, and I figured I would take a few minutes at least to kind of go through the mods that I'm going to be using and talk a little bit about uh, how I plan on approaching the playthrough. So without further ado, here are the mods. As you can see, there are a few. Um, I am, however, or I have rather, uh, put them all into a Google Doc here that I will link to in the description of the video so you can peruse it at your leisure and get the links to all of the different mods that I ended up using. And yeah, so uh, just to go through them very briefly, uh, Autosave is a utility mod uh, that just has a pop-up up here in the lower right hand corner of the screen just reminding you that hey it's been like 45 minutes since you saved and there's been three battles and five market transactions in that time so you might want to think about saving it does not actually auto save for you so the, the the name of the mod is a little bit misleading it just reminds you to occasionally hit that f5 button uh, as a note i'm not going to be doing iron man uh, this is mostly because if I were to do Iron Man and something were to happen with a recording or something like that, uh, that would be that would be very sad. Uh, so I'll be playing it, Iron Man, um, and if I get wiped out, I get wiped out, and we'll have to try and rebuild. But uh, that I, I'm not actually going to be running it on Iron Man. Um, Next up, we have Combat Chatter, uh, which will have some messages from your ships in your fleet up here in the upper left-hand corner of the screen during battles, where they'll warn you when they're overloading or taking hull damage or if they're at 50% hull damage and that sort of stuff. Uh, pretty useful to have. Uh, the one thing that does kind of annoy me about it is it has um, some roleplay type messages appear in it, and I don't know, but for whatever reason, it seems like my pilots always have like a Luddic church personality, so they're always talking about the hammer of Lud and stuff like that. It's very strange. Uh, Commissioned Cruise is a mod that um, basically what it does is when you're commissioned with a faction, you will automatically get a unique, a hull mod unique to that faction. And it doesn't cost any ordinance points or anything like that, and it automatically gets added onto your ships when you are docked uh, with one of their stations. Um, so most of them are actually pretty cool. Like the 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 hull mod that they give you uh, adds a fair bit, or, or it fits thematically with the faction. So I kind of like it. Uh, disassemble reassemble is uh, I love the ships in this. Um, they fit incredibly well with the base game. It's mostly got a low-tech and midline focus, but um, if for no other reason, I would include it for the Gladiators. The Gladiators are an amazing frigate. Uh, they are tough hounds with shields. So a nice big old medium ballistic mount, and yeah, they just kind of go to town. Uh, hazard Mining. Uh, oh, I've also given each of these mods sort of an ABC rating, um, depending on how much I like them. Uh, I'm not including anything that I don't like, obviously, but there's a couple that I, I haven't played with yet, like the HMI Supervillains, so they have a question mark. Uh, anyhow, uh, Hazard Mining Incorporated. Um, the, the ships are kind of neat, especially some of their low-tech sort of junker ships, but what really makes HMI awesome is the weapons. There's some really, really cool sort of zany out there weapons uh, in hazard mining um, that are just fun to use. Um, the supervillains is kind of interesting. It's a sub-mod for HMI that adds uh, two piratey type factions, one high-tech, one low-tech. The low-tech ones are kind of, they, they're based on, um, oh gosh, who are those? The, the Reavers from uh, um, Firefly, if you ever watched that series. They remind me, 
well, they're very much inspired by that. And if you read the fluff for it, it is actually like their backstory is basically the reverse from Firefly. And then uh, the Draco group is the other one. They're the high tech ones. And uh, they operate out of a system called Prester John. Uh, so they're um, obviously a nod to that weird Christian mythology thing. And sorry, give me just a moment. My cat's yowling outside my daughter's door right now and is going to wake her up. I will be right back. Sorry about that. I'm back. I think he thinks I'm crazy when I'm sitting here talking at my computer screen, so he's coming to ask me if I am indeed crazy or not. Anyhow, um, so yeah, the, the guy's operating out of Prester John, so um, that's a cool, interesting little bit of like medieval mythology. If you ever want to check out Prester John and the Kingdom of Ind, it's interesting, for sure. Um, the high-tech expansion, uh, I like including this when I'm playing Nexerlin, because oftentimes Tritachion will really, really struggle in a Nexerlin game, um, and this does definitely help beef up the high-tech lineup. It gives uh, Tritachion a fighting chance against like the overwhelming firepower of the hegemony. Um, Portraits are portraits. I kind of describe it here. There's more pictures. I like the way they look. There's no waifus. That's kind of my cat pri priorities when it comes to portrait packs. Um, the next one here is in a similar vein to the high tech expansion pack, uh, the Luddick Enhancement pack. Um, it gives some more ships to the Luddick Church. And just like with the high tech expansion pack, uh, the Luddock Church can uh, tends to get its teeth kicked in uh, by the hegemony or by really anybody uh, in Nexerlin. Um, more hull mods. I haven't played with this yet. I want to try it out. Uh, it adds a few new hull mods that uh, some of which I think look interesting. Uh, then we have another portrait pack. Uh, the Reuter Union. Um, these guys are the ones that I am going to be commissioning with. Uh, they are a uh, independent faction or independent aligned faction. They're also relatively friendly to the hegemony, at least at the beginning. We'll see how that holds up. Um, but they're kind of cool because they're low-tech carriers, which is different. Um, I'm going to be uh, commissioned with them and kind of try to focus around their ships because I don't play carriers very often. Uh, but the other nice thing about them is they're more along the lines of battle carriers by the looks of it. So they're designed to actually be able to hold their line in a fight as well as uh, field ships or field fighters. So seems like an interesting combination. And yeah, I'm going to run with them and we'll see how it goes. Uh, ship and weapon pack. Um, is a just a collection of ships and weapons, like it says on the tin. Uh, it's one of the older mod packs out there, I think. Uh, I love it. It's got a bunch of fantastic ships that really help round out some of the um, some of the gaps within Star Sector. Um, so I like to include it. Um, Tian Dong Heavy Industries. This is another faction pack, and I mostly included them because I enjoy them. They're um, they most of their ships fall into kind of a midline type play style, uh, but in some ways they play more like low tech ships. They tend to be armor heavy, low maneuverability, but they have decent shields. Um, so yeah, uh, I haven't used them in quite a while. This B plus rating is based on a, a version from uh, like a year ago, so who knows how much they might have changed since then. And then Underworld. Uh, this is my probably one of my favorite mods in the game. Um, it, it it really beefs up the pirates. It makes them actually threatening and actually scary. Um, and uh, it also gives you access to uh, well, it creates a, another little sub faction that's actually almost barnacled on to Tritachion called the Cabal, which is a pirate faction that has some really, really cool modified ships. Um, I've, I've shown off the Cabal variant of the, um, the Odyssey and the Aurora in a couple of my battle videos, and you can see how potent they are in those. Um, 
Unknown Skies uh, basically is just a planet reskin. I think the guy that put this mod together did a fantastic job making the planets look really cool. And then Vira's ship pack is another ship pack. Vira is another... Um, uh, she's done another whole game overhaul mod called Vira's Sector, uh, which I'm not going to be running, but it is quite good. I just prefer Nexarilin. Oh, and I also just realized I did not actually include Nexarilin on my list of mods here, but yes, I'm going to be running Nexarilin as well. Um, if, yeah. So, anyhow, let's talk a little bit about my plan for this playthrough. Uh, my goal with it is I'm kind of coming at it with the assumption that you're not a brand new player. This is not the first time you're looking at Star Sector. This is not the first, um, like you've played a bit of a Star Sector. You've played some vanilla Star Sector. Maybe now you're interested in moving into some mods and stuff like that. And uh, so I'm going to be approaching it from that angle. You're aware of a lot of the basic mechanics. You might not be aware of some of the more um, fiddly bits within Star Sector's mechanics. So I'll be going over those. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at like outlet, um, at uh, loadouts for vanilla ships and stuff like that, but I probably will spend some time with the modded ships because... Uh, Honestly, with quite a few of the modded ships, I'll probably be figuring them out as we go. Okay, sorry if there was an awkward jump there, but uh, I had to, um, well, I messed up with the recording. So I'm re-recording this part of the intro, but I could, figured I could salvage the first half where I'm talking about the mods and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so anyhow, let's start up a new game. Uh, first, let's pick a picture. And first of all, apologies to Lucid, because I put a couple of portraits up for to, for people to tell me which ones they wanted, and Lucid really, really liked that guy. And I thought he was pretty cool too, but then I ended up deciding that instead, if I can find him here, I was going to go with... I'm going to embarrass myself and not be able to find him now. sure he was on the right hand side of the screen if I was doing a high tech playthrough I'd totally play that guy because he looks like a like techno space viking but I'm not doing a high tech playthrough I am doing a low tech playthrough so we are going to use and you can sort of see how uh, the, these are all the different portraits from those two portrait packs that I included and there's some cool ones and you can see the distinct change in style towards the bottom here as I get into the second portrait pack. Uh, why can I never find this guy? Okay, I'm just going to put a pause in here and find him. There we go, got him. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with this guy, because he has a beard that reminds me of the beard that I used to have in pre-COVID times, that I had to shave down till it was like seven millimeters long, because I could not comfortably wear a mask over it. And since I have to wear a mask for like seven hours a day at work, um, that was proving to be untenable. Uh, so, there's my picture. And Imperialis... And we are not going to have help pop-ups. I will remember to untick that this time, because that's those are annoying. And I'm also not going to be playing Iron Mode. I'm going to leave the Sector on Mixed. I like Mixed, personally. Um, and leave the Sector Size on Normal. Because uh, a small Sector is just a boring Sector. Especially with mods, it gets very cramped. So, uh, this is the intro to Next Ireland. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will go through it slowly. And if you want, you can pause the video and read it. And we will start playing. So, uh, if this is your first time seeing Nexarilin or seeing Nexarilin set up, you've got a couple of options. Um, 
you can enable random core worlds. So by default, the core worlds in the center of the map are set. Uh, Jengala will always be in the same. It will always be in the Corvus system. The Corvus system will always be in the same place, um, and the the stations will be in the same place, and the planets will be in the same place. Um, and most of the mods are integrated in such a way that they sort of bolt on to the edges of the core sectors or the core worlds uh, and they sort of integrate with them that way if you feel like doing something random you can enable random core worlds and you can actually do some really cool stuff if you do this uh, you can alter the number of populated systems alter the number of populated planets the number of stations all that sort of stuff uh, you can do some more cool stuff with the factions. You can enable or disable individual factions. Um, you can some of these you can do with uh, uh, the like you can enable random faction relationships and enable faction responding regardless of whether or not you have random core worlds. Uh, but if you do enable random core worlds, oops, click the wrong button. Um, you can do things like enable random faction spawning rates or disable faction spawning rates where um, if you enable this it'll basically make it so that the big factions like the hegemony and the Persian league are still going to be big factions uh, tritac is still going to be a small faction if you enable random faction or spawn weights though uh, you might end up with a hegemony that controls two planets and a tritachion that controls four systems. Um, so that can be kind of interesting uh, just to sort of bumble your way through. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, but we are not going to be doing random core worlds. So just showing that as an example. What we are going to be doing, however, though, is we're going to disable Prism Freeport. Um, that says, well, you can see in the lower right-hand corner, a trade station in hyperspace includes a special vendor that sells all kinds of high-end ships for a price. It's a very expensive way to get some very, very high-quality ships. You know what? I'm going to enable it. I might not use it. I probably won't use it. The AI won't use it. So... Uh, I'll leave it there as an option for a late game if I just feel like mucking about with something cool. Uh, custom scenarios are another thing that you can do if you've enabled random sector generation. Uh, so we're not going to be running a custom scenario. I've never played any of the custom scenarios. Uh, I'm not going to enable random starting ships um, because I like, well, let's face it, the Reuter Union does not have great... Um, great uh, starting sh great ships in general uh, they're 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 not they're not fantastic so I'm going to at least know what I'm walking I want to at least know what I'm walking into I'm certainly not going to be enabling easy mode but what I am going to do is enable starfarer mode and starfarer mode is basically a hard mode it uh, increases the hostility uh, or the aggression of the other factions towards you. So if you're doing things like uh, running around on the black market and stuff like that, it will actually make them mad. Um, it also, and this is what I really like it for, is it lowers colony growth rate and lowers the income of colonies. And that's because in vanilla, even in vanilla Nexerilin, once you get a colony up and running and profitable, you've won the game. From that point on, it's really just a matter of uh, building ships and glassing the hegemony or killing remnant nexuses or whatever the case might be. You're into the end game uh, once you get a, a station or a colony built and uh, self-sustaining um, and to be honest the very late game is not my favorite part of the game uh, the very early game I don't care for and the very late game I don't care for so this makes the very late game come later so I like that um, and then uh, lower insurance payments and as you anger the different um, the different factions they'll come after your colonies more frequently. Um, other than that, 
starting demods none i will start with demods because i'm starting as the reuters and the reuters have trash ships and i'm not going to enable a random start location i'm going to start at the reuter capital um, so we'll go back and just double check make sure sure i didn't muck any nope looks like my settings are the way i want them so let's proceed now you can pick your faction that you start commissioned with you can also start uh this would be closer to the default vanilla start where you start without any alignment to any faction you can start with a random faction and then there's a couple of custom start oh there's the cabal friends i was looking for this in the last one this is basically a pirate start except you start friendly with the cabal and try tachyon which is kind of cool so um yeah the uh quite a powerful pirate start uh so can be kind of fun um, the spacer start is ridiculous. You start with like a Mercury shuttle and nothing else. Uh, and I think you, are, yeah, it says here you you owe money that you have to pay back. Um, and this is just sort of a, I've never played either of these starts or this one for that matter, but you can read it if you want. So you start with the Ludic Church on that one. And you start independent with this one with, uh, looks like, a kit-bashed fleet. And then the Infernal Machine, uh, you start with a big scary capital ship. So, uh, yeah, anyhow, I haven't played that one either. I should at some point. But for this, uh, as you can see, you can start Hazard Mining, Hegemony, Ludic Church, Ludic Path, Persian League or Pirates, Reuters, Sindri and Diktak, Tian Dong, Hitami Industries, or Tritachyon. We are going to be starting with the Reuters. And in the case of this, um, you can pick what sort of fleet you want to start with. Combat small, combat large, carrier small, carrier large, explorer large, or super ship. Uh, Reuter Union actually has very few choices. If you start with um, particularly one of the uh, the vanilla factions, you've actually got multiple choices. So you could pick a small combat fleet where you start with a Persephone and two Scoots, or you could pick a small combat fleet where you have a Sunder, a Shade, and a Hecate, or you could pick a small combat fleet where you have a Medusa, a Wolf, and a Brawler. Um, so, uh, and then there's more large fleets, more trade fleets, more trade, lots more options with some of the vanilla factions. But that's okay. We're going to start with as the Reuters in a small combat fleet. So this gives us a Ongar class balance destroyer, which seems like a pretty decent destroyer. It's got pretty good armor. It's got decent hull. It has a pretty darn bad shield. I've seen worse, but not much worse. Um, and. Other than that, uh, the cool thing about it is even though it is a pretty serviceable destroyer in its own right, it also comes with a fighter squadron, which is nice. I don't, uh, I don't remember if it's one that I can change, if I can swap out the bolts for something else or not, but uh, we will see. Then it also comes with a Cyclops uh, frigate, which has uh, a terrible shield at uh, 1.2 flux per damage. And just give me a moment here. Sorry, had to cough. Uh, so yeah, it's got a terrible shield. Uh, mediocre flux dissipation. Okay-ish armor. Um, and then a hound. And a hound is a hound. It has no shield. It has... Well, okay-ish armor, but still, it has no shield. So therefore, it's a hound. Um, I am, however, going to be starting as a lieutenant. Uh, because like I mentioned briefly before, I don't particularly care for the very early game of Star Sector, where uh, I would be spending the first hour bouncing around doing uh, bar missions for trade. Um, I just, I, I don't enjoy it. I've done it before and just don't particularly feel like doing it again. Uh, I've done it many times before and don't particularly feel like doing it again. So this just kind of boosts me out um, and actually puts me in a position where I can comfortably support a destroyer too and pick up another frigate and go start killing bounties right away. And that is it. That should be it for this episode. I'm just going to click done here. Um, I'll go over skills 
Uh, I guess I could do it briefly now. Uh, so I'm going to be starting down industry. And I'm doing this because I plan on taking bounties early on, and I want to build up my fleet using salvage ships early on. Uh, so I'm going to go into industry, and then with my five remaining points, I am going to go for recovery operations and two points of field repairs. Um, so this will let me get uh, better ships with fewer demods, and this will let me um, just be a little bit tougher again because we're low tech ships. We're not gonna we're gonna have to rely on armor. So that level two of field repairs is really gonna make a big difference in those early game fights. Um, and I am going to be getting level three with my very first level up. Uh, and of course, recovery operations. Uh, recovered ships have fewer D mods, I get extra fuel, I have an increased chance to recover disabled ships. It's just all around good if you plan on building your fleet up from scratch. Another good option would be something like going down the technology uh, and going for loadout design and navigation. Uh, this helps you move around more and this just makes your ships overall better. But we are not going for good ships, we are going for many ships. So, with that in mind, industry it is. And the other nice thing too is um, basically in the very early game I'm going to be unlocking technology and industry. These are the two key skills for me at least. Um, and once I get salvaging up and uh, navigation up and sensors up, so once I pick up these three skills, um, all to level three, I'll be able to start, I'd be comfortable starting to explore, um, or at least do deeper dives into the periphery. Um, so let's start the game. And that is the end of episode zero as this is generating away. And next episode, we'll get some actual gameplay for episode one. That's about it. Cheers.